Mark and Jennifer, come on down. All right, I want you to just begin to pray over them right now. Pray over them like you'd want someone praying over you. Just praying, believing God that supernaturally having, a, having an effect over them right now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, let's, let's just pray over them really now. Father, we thank you, God, for these dear friends this morning. We thank you for the need that they find in this little church right now. We thank you, oh God, that you are here and that you are there for them and that you are going on with them right now. In Jesus' name, I pray. I just want you guys to relax. <laughs> if somehow you got elected to be the first one out of the to shoot tonight, and everybody else is wondering how this is about to go, but you're going to set the tone for the whole night, because this is going to be one of the most fun, rewarding evenings of your lives and of this church. It's just going to be just a lot of fun. And, and I have a feeling that you guys are a lot of fun on the inside. You don't let it come out as often as you want. Maybe in private you have a whole lot of fun, and then you try to put your serious face on in public and not be so fun. But it's okay to be fun. It's okay to relax because God loves the way you are. And I want to say to you tonight that you are more than qualified. I think at times you, you feel like, I, I, just, I just don't quite measure up. In fact, there's been someone in your life that has told you that you're not quite where you need to be, and that's a lie. Your qualifier is the Holy Spirit, Amen. not your not your past, not your your education, not your ability. It's the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of you, and with Him, all things are possible. Things that you don't even know of are possible, and and there's going to come a day where you begin to step into areas that other people think I never dreamed that man could do that, never saw that potential in him. It's going to shock yourself. You're going to like, I didn't think I would ever do that either. That's out of my comfort zone. And God says, but I had it planned a long time ago. And you're going to, you're going to have a lot of fun. And you're just going to naturally step into some creative ideas, some creative ways of ministering that's going to be extremely effective. And, and people are going to be in shock. And there's going to be something on the inside of you that says, I knew that was in there. I, I knew that was, I was looking for, I knew that was in there. I was waiting for my moment. But it's really not about you. It's about what God wants to do through you. But you're going to be very rewarded in it because you're longing for just a little bit more, just that next step, just that next validation, so to speak. Not really by them, but by God. God, am I where I want, where I need to be, where you want me to be? And he wants to say, son, I, you're exactly where you need to be right now. You're going to be exactly where I want you to be when I want you to be there. You're not going to miss anything and, and, I, and I see you just being a support system like no other in fact you've kind of held back a little bit hoping he would get in that whatever that role is you kind of see that in your mind you kind of have an idea of where he fits in the whole picture and you're just kind of balancing this thing out and, and God's saying it's okay God's going to get him right where he needs to be in the process God's going to do a work in your heart as well I don't know what it is about children I, I just I just see children I just see a love for children. I see a mother's heart. I, I see you mothering not just your own, but other. You just you're just natural with kids. They just they love being around you. You're gentle with them. You've got a lot of wisdom. They're gonna grow up and always look at you, no matter how old they are. They will always look at you as a mom. In fact, there's gonna be people older than you that look to you as a mom, and that's gonna be like this is awkward. But it's natural. They're drawn to you because you have that mothering instinct that says, "It's okay, baby. Come here. Let me help you." And they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna be attracted to you because there's so many that are without moms. I'm, I'm talking spiritual and physical. I'm talking about you're going to have to mother some, some people naturally. And then you're going to mother them spiritually. So it's not just, well, there's spiritual moms in the house. You, you are that. But they're going to be those that you rescue. And you're going to be a mom too for a season. And you're going to help them out. And, and they're going to look back and then that's my real mom. This person birthed me, but that's my real mom because she cared about me. And so I just want to release the, the limits that you've placed upon yourself. 
I want you to quit measuring yourself up to those around you. You look at Carrie and Diane and you look at the, the ones in front of you and think, man, that's such an anointing. That same anointing is upon you. Just walk into it gracefully. You can't attain it. You can't. You just have to be faithful in it. Just keep doing what you're doing. Show up early. Serve, serve, serve. And you will wake up one day and look back and go, how did we get here? How did God get us here? We, we always dreamed of this. We, this is what our heart's desire was. And, and now we've stepped into it before we even knew it. And now we're standing on top of it. And it's like, wait a minute. Is this, is this real? You're going to lay in bed at night and have these conversations of, can you believe what happened today with us? You're going to have a hard time going to sleep because it is just so rewarding. The, the, the opportunities that come your way and the, the level of maturity that comes your way. You're, you're going to have a, a grasp, an understanding of spiritual things like you've never had before. It's going to start really making sense. You're not going to need a blueprint to, to figure it out. It's just going to make a lot of sense. You're going to be like, when Pastor said that, I understood what he was talking about. And if for nobody else in the room, I got it. And I receive it. And so, and so I want you to be one, especially you, sir, be one that draws the anointing out of the person speaking or preaching. I mean, just tune in them like I'm not going to let them out of my sight. Just draw it as if you're an empty vessel needing to be filled up with anointing. And every time you see a man or a woman with anointing, just say, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to lock in on whatever they're doing, and I'm just going to let that anointing pour out into me. And, and the, what's unique about this is, Carrie, you may can help me with this, but I, I know there's an anointing of the Holy Spirit, but I believe there's different anointings for different things. And so you're not going to be a, a one-talent kind of guy when it comes to anointing. You're, you're going to see this person, they've got an anointing for healing, and you're like, I want that anointing. And you're going to begin to read scripture about that. And you're going to begin to study that a little bit. And you're going to begin to meditate on, I, I want to be able to do that. And then someone's going to come along with a gift of, of wisdom. And you're going to say, I want that anointing. And I just saw like, a, like at a wedding when they have the sands and they pour all the different colors together. Your life is going to reflect a multicolored vessel of anointings. Like the beauty in him is he's not, he just doesn't lean one direction. He just shows up and whatever God needs in that moment begins to come out. Amen. And you're going to find great joy when he steps into that. In fact, you'll say, I don't even care if I ever get any more anointing or not. As long as I'm with him and he's full of anointing, I am totally fine. And he is going to be full of multiple anointings, so to speak. And so I, I want you guys to just enjoy the journey. Just relax. Enjoy the journey. God will put you where you need to be when he's ready for you to be there. Just stay faithful. Just stay available. And just stay happy. The, the, the humor, maybe the crazy kind of humor you have behind closed doors, let that humor come out and relax. People are going to love you just the way you are. You don't have to measure up or hold a, 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 a facade or a stand. Just relax. Just laugh out loud. Just be corny out loud. If you're, if they're, just be you. And people are going to appreciate that about you. Amen. Amen. Mark, Jennifer, is that right? Man, this brain appears sometimes. Mark, I, I see you like a get or done kind of a guy. Just like put your head down, tell me what to do, and I'll do it. Yeah. Uh, but I hear the Lord's like tapping you on the shoulder, and he's like, lift up your head, because I'm calling you up. And I felt like the Holy Spirit told me, the Lord says to you, promotion's coming. And you said, I'm, I'm disqualified, I can't do it, I don't, I don't know that I can have it, but God says you can, promotion's coming. And it's been like, there's been some voices, I don't know, in your head, there's been some voices, maybe even people around you that have tried to hold you back or, or keep you from doing something. And the Lord is coming right now, I just see like this severing of the ties of the enemy and the severing of the voices in your mind. And man, there is freedom coming to you right now. Mark, I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is warring on your behalf. And he's so powerful that he's cutting all those voices off because promotion is in your future. I just feel like it's like this hug of a dad right now. It's like an aff affirmation of a dad is coming to you, man. And I don't know what your, your background's like, and, um, but the Lord wants to heal your heart. And he wants to heal it with a hug. Dude, can I hug you?
No, stand up, stand up, man. I don't ever do this. This is weird. But sometimes this is weird, you know what I mean? But I feel like this is, on these shoulders, the Lord's going to put a lot of weight. You're stepping into a new season. This is a new day. You were born for this. You were born for this. Man, I just feel like um, God is bringing more to you. Uh, again, it's promotion. It's this thing of like there's adding more. There's more coming to you. And get ready for it and believe for it and ask for it. Say, okay, God, and it's more anointing. Maybe it's more in the workplace. Maybe it's more in the family. Whatever it is, God, I'm ready to receive it because God's about to pour it out on these shoulders. You got it, all right? God bless you, Mark. And uh, I just saw this, like, quiet dragon in you. It's, like, so sweet, but inside you know. You know who you are, and you know who God's called you to be. And I see you wrestling and warring for things. And there is a prophetic edge on you, and you can, you can hear God. And I want to affirm to you tonight that God is calling you out because he's been speaking to you. He's been speaking specific words to you. And it's even when you're, I just saw you in the grocery store, you're pushing this cart, and you see something over somebody. You heard you, something prompted you to go up to somebody and talk to them. That's the Holy Spirit. Keep going. Keep doing it. God's calling you out tonight because he's put his voice inside of you, and he's giving you ears to hear. Come on, quiet dragon, let it out. Let it out. Amen. And I just, I just heard the Lord say um, his grace is sufficient for you. His grace is sufficient. I don't know if there's been a, there's something, an issue that you've been keeping before the Lord. It's like this mountain that you can't get over. And God just wants to come to you today with comfort, saying, I've got you. I've got this family. Your, my grace is sufficient for you, says the Lord. I'm going to give you everything you need exactly when you need it. I'm calling you royal. This is for both of you. You are royalty. He's so proud of you. Amen? Is there a father issue? Did, did, is there a breach in a relationship with a father or maybe father didn't believe in you like you'd hoped he would or something? I mean, do you feel like you have a great relationship between you and your father? Yeah, 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 good. I, I, just, I, I just felt like God wanted to, to make sure there's no unforgiveness or anything you're harboring. I think it's a, a connection with you really exploding into the next season of your life. And so I want you to search your heart and say, God, is there any regrets or anything that maybe I have held on? And just, just choose to love, love him unconditionally. Not, not, not that there be anything in, in you that would hold you back. Because I really feel like you're, yeah, I said you were the first one out of the shoot tonight. I, I feel like that's a part of your word. I, I feel like God's wanting to put just... It's like you're in like a horse that's been that's just been kind of bridled up, and you're leaning against the metal, and, they, and there's just 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 in the days ahead, just say, God, not let, let there not be one thing holding me back. So just search my heart, God, and make sure that everything's right between me and my Father. Maybe even between you and God. I don't know if there's been a hurt in the past, but make sure that all the father issues are, are where they need to be. Maybe even you and a spiritual father, and just say, "All right, God, if I've." I've ever been overlooked or maybe ever been misunderstood, and there just needs to be a healing. It's like the moment you release and forgive and let them go, it's like, all right, boom, you're out, of the, you're out of the stall and you're running. It was like, was it that easy? Was it just like, I didn't even think about it. I didn't even, I didn't, I didn't even know that was holding me back. And then in just one moment, you just said, all right, God, I give that fully to you. And it's like the gate swung open, and she's like, hold on, honey, come back. Here. You're just going crazy. Like I can't help myself. I, I'm having dreams. I'm having visions. I'm having pr prophetic ideas. You, he told you you were going to be prophetic. I can't go through the grocery store anymore. I've got to talk to somebody because I just saw that myself. Did you see that? And she said, yeah, I already saw that. Can I say something or do you want to say something? Because somebody needs to say something right now. And you don't always see yourself that way. And it's not going to be awkward and God's not going to embarrass you. But you're going to be driven to live out loud without any reservation, without anybody wondering what's up with it. Because when you hit the mark, they won't care what's up with this guy. I needed that word. I needed that encouragement. I see you giving other people hugs like he just gave you, as awkward as that is. Can I give you a hug? You know, and, 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 and that's what you're going to say to somebody, and they're going to look at you like, 
we're in the middle of a store. Are you serious? I'm like, nah, I just feel like I'm supposed to give you a bit. And they're going to melt because they've longed for someone to have pure love, to just give them a good old bear hug. Say, I love you, man. I care about you. And so I see her as a, as, as a the, the mother. I see you as, as ministering to a lot of men. Just, 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 you're just real, and they need somebody that's real. And so just, just relax and wait for those doors to swing open and hang on. Here we go. It's going to be exciting. I'm just going to pray this prayer, prophetic prayer over you, that God is going to lift from you the what ifs. The what if I fail? What if I make a mistake? What if I don't live up to anything? The what ifs, when that is lifted from you, then the sky is the limit. You can do everything that God has put in your heart. Not a second guessing or a second thought. Just join hands there together. Father, through the name of the Lord Jesus, over Mark and Jennifer, I release them from second-guessing you, from second-guessing themselves, from second-guessing your plan over their lives. The promises are yes and amen, and they are to them tonight. And we release them into fulfillment. We release them to, to go after and pursue you in everything that you've ordained them and called them to and they step into. Let faith extend beyond what they ever thought possible to be. And we thank you, Lord for your grace filling them night in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bless you guys. Love you. I'll give you a hug. I just want to confirm, because sometimes not everybody knows, that Mark uh, is a driver for UPS. He started out handling packages. would get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, hold down another job, and he's had some challenges, and most of them know him have, but we've prayed for him on there. And he has had to overcome a lots of challenges when other people told him he wasn't qualified, and he couldn't do it. He has broke through that barrier and keeps just expanding beyond that and just keeps getting promoted with that. Jennifer is working as a, a director, uh, activities director, nursing home, and she's with older people that sees her kind of like a mom. And we haven't even made this known yet, we, since you prophesied overnight, is that she's just going to be uh, taking over the nursery with the children. And just in this, been the last, last week when those have been ratified. And so it's amazing when God calls you out into things that you didn't think you could. And so that's what prophecy does. It extends beyond that point. So anyway, we're so, we're so excited for them. And they're, they're a great couple. Glad, we're glad to operate and work with them. Okay, the next couple. Fedora and Ashton Weems, where are they? Come on, come on, come on, hurry. Amen. Should have made them more room. I don't know what position they like more. Here they come. You need to come over here, yeah. That's why it's set up. Or you can step up here. Do it while you can. All right, this is Ashton and Fedora. But you guys step up and we're going to pray over them. Amen. Just thank you. Everybody just extend your hand right towards them. And begin to pray. Let faith rise for this couple right now. guys are so fun. Like, I feel like we could hang out, and it would be fun. Let's do it. <laughs> well, um, man, I just, I just see all over you, like, I could figure this out. Like, doesn't matter what it is, you could figure it out. Doesn't matter if it's any issue, I could figure it out. Uh, and the Lord says, yes, you can. And I just see him unlocking deep mysteries to you. This is a season where you've been digging, and like, you've been questioning. You're saying, God, what, what is this, and why that, and what about this? And is this really right? And is this really true? And there's been this like digging in your spirit to the Lord. And I just hear the Lord say this so clearly. He's not afraid of your questions. He's not afraid. Please question. I just hear the Holy Spirit because as you question, he says to you, I'm going to answer. And as you dig, I'm going to fill. 
and you've been digging trenches, you've been acting, stepping out in faith and doing some things. I don't know if it's with your business or with work or something, but you've been digging trenches and you're saying, God, I'm going to step out, but I don't, know if you're, I don't know about this. There's like some question marks tied to it. And God says, I'm coming to fill the ditches. I'm coming to fill the ditches. And I even just feel like there's something in this, this fall that's coming this fall, in this next few months, that God's going to break through. It's even like in this next eight weeks, that God's going to come and break through in a crazy way for you because you've been faithful to dig and you've been faithful to pursue the Holy Spirit like that. He's so proud of you. He's so proud of you. It's like others said, I don't, I don't, know, I don't know about the success of this one. Uh, but God's looked down and said, I've had my hand on you your whole life. I've had my hand on you your whole life, and I've reserved you for this moment. And there's a breakthrough moment for you right now. I think it's tied to all what we're talking about. This, is a dest- I just, this phrase is popping in my spirit. It's a destiny season for you. It's a destiny season. It's going to launch you. It's like, a, it's like aiming you to launch you in the direction for the rest of your life. And there's no stress. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. And just take it and go. But I just feel, I feel like the Lord is drilling in your identity in this season for you. So keep going. Keep questioning. Keep asking. Keep digging. He's going to fill the ditches, and he's for you. Amen? Amen. What was your name? Ashton. Ashton. Man, there, you were like a fireball. It's just, uh, it, it's just, she says, yep. She's, yep, yep. Man, the anointing of God is all over you. And, and I feel like you've asked the Lord, um, I just hear these, these statements like, God, I want to heal like that. And God, I want to prophesy like that. And I, I want to do like that. And you've even like looked people up and I just see, I don't know if the, on YouTube and all this stuff, like you've been watching them. And you're saying, God, this is what I want my life to look like. And the Lord said, that's not even the, that's not even the tip of the iceberg. This, there's so much more that I want to do through you than what you've aspired to be. And God is flowing his anointing through you. He's flowing his gifting through you. And truly, your hands will heal the sick. You've read that verse, and you said, God, I want to heal the sick. Your hands are going to heal the sick. And there's a, there's a soft place in your heart for the broken. There's a soft place in your heart for the poor and the needy. And God is, God is so pleased with you that he's opening doors of favor for you to minister to those people. But it's not just ministry. It's not just here's food and here's blankets and here's stuff. It's here's the power of God unto salvation. And you're going to see the power of God break through in such a way that there's salvation after salvation after salvation. They're going to see Jesus in you. Mighty woman of God, step up. This is your time. Don't step back. Step up. Shine. And let the gift of God flow through you. I just sense you're a very intelligent man. In fact, most people don't know how intelligent you are. But you're a very, you're a deep processor. And you can come up with the right answer. It's going to take you a little time. And you may not even have the, uh, the, you may not solve the problem in the way they say you're to solve the problem. But you have a very analytical mind that can process it out and come up with a solution to almost any situation. And that's what you love doing. Other more, a lot more than digging the ditch. You like solving the problem. Like, I could tell them where to put this ditch because they don't even know what they're doing right now. <laughs> this is foolish. And why are they doing it? Makes no, water doesn't run uphill, people. I mean, let's, let's, like, let's fix this. You're like, why am I doing this? This is insane. And God says, I, just like he said, I, I feel it strongly. There's going to be a recognition of that gift on the inside of you. In fact, in fact I feel like there's coming a, a, a moment of strategy for this church, that this church is in a season of, of, of explosive growth. It's a, there's a, there's going to be a lot of things changing around here. There's going to be an expansion, but there's going to need to be some strategy on how to get from right here to right here. And your mind will automatically engage and say, I, I, think, I, I think I can see that. Give me a few weeks. I think I can come up with the answer to get us from here to here. And God's going to creatively give you a, a spirit of wisdom and understanding to see how to it's like a, a bridge builder. It's like the funnest part of school is when you built the bridge and you go like, I love that. I love like creating that and making it do stuff that no one else has made it do before. And I think in ministry, God's going to use that creative gift to, to solve some mysteries for the church, to get them from point A 
to point B, and you're, and you're absolutely going to love it. And, but, so there's going to be a spiritual promotion. There's going to be something that fulfills an inner part of your heart connected to the church. But there's also going to be physical, just straight-out physical promotion, a blessing at work. You're going to get financial promotion. You're going to get a position promotion. You're going to get an honor promotion. It's like the, the uh, mistaken identity is going to be removed from you, and they're going to go, wow, we had this level 10 guy here and didn't even realize it. And so it's coming. Embrace it. And so uh, I just I also see you small grouping with, with a group of young men and young couples, and they really look up to you. They really glean from the way you see the, the scriptures, the way you uh, interpret the word from Sunday. And you say, man, when pastor said this, this is really what I got out of that. And, and they're going to like, man, that's awesome. I didn't see that before. And you're like, oh, yeah, it makes perfect sense to me. You're going to be almost an interpreter of the word. To, to be able to interpret what he really was trying to get into the people, and you're going to say, hey, let me, let me put it in your terms. You're going to be like one who bridges the gap generationally that says, this is just how they perceive it, but let me tell you, let me give you the code. It's like the map, and if you understand the code over here, then it's easier to read this map, and you're going to say, well, I have that code. I don't know why I have that code, but when he says something, I put the code to it, and then I can tell these these young men and, and women, th this is what he was really trying to say. And they're going to be like, that makes perfect sense now. And so just realize that that's a part of who you are to take, not change it at all, not, not reinterpret it, just make it understandable for the people where they can go, oh, that makes me, you're, you're going to be like a man of parables. And, and he's going to say something and you're going to say, well, let me tell you like this. And you're going to give them a parable and they're going to be like, all right, that's easy to see. I get that now. And you, firecracker, you want to do a cartwheel to get up on this stage. You were looking at us from over there, like, pick me. Oh, I'm already picked. Pick me. It's like, I want, can I get my work now? I'll go first. If they don't want to go first, I'll go first. Um, I, I just see, I see a, a few things. I saw, I saw at, at our church, we have a few ministries. One is with pregnant moms, and one of them's a program called Embrace Grace. After they have their baby, there's a, a, a group of women that surround them and get them through that process. They could become young moms. It's teenagers. They have no one to go to. The, there's women that gather around them and give them hope and a future and help them get the things that they need. And I just see you being that kind of person that, that's just, you, you say, honey, uh, can we take care of someone for a few days? Or can I buy this for someone? Or can I do that for someone? I really, I, they really need it. I know it's going to be tight for us, but I really, can I give this away? And you're like, honey, you really like that? I know, but I think they need it more. And that, that's just going to be a part of your ministry. And I also felt like you have the potential to to convince, that's the word I got, you have potential to convince a hundred young girls to come and see what God is doing in this place. And it's not going to be about, you got to come check out this church. You're going to say, it, uh, the story I got was the Samaritan woman that went to the well and had a conversation with Jesus. And after that conversation, her life changed. In fact, he said, if you'd have known who I was, you'd have asked me for a drink, and I'd have given you living water. And you're going to leave from this tonight thing. I tasted some waters that I'd never tasted before. And I've got to go back into my city, and I've got to tell him, you have got to come to this place. Because there's a prophet here that's going to tell you what you've never heard before. That's going to know things about you that no one else knew. And that, that, that this just radically changed. This is changing your life right here. This is taking you to a whole nother faith level. Like, this stuff is more real than I ever thought it was real. And I got to experience it firsthand. And that, that assurance on the inside of you is going to be easy for you to convince others. Because they're going to see it in your eyes. And they're going to know, this is real. I mean, she's really excited about what she's saying. I've got to go wherever she's asking me to go. Because she's that passionate about it. You're very, you're very contagious spiritually. And so I, I really, I saw the number 100. It's almost like you need to say, all right, God, give me that 100. You know, I, just, just make that kind of your present life go. All right, I want to see 100 young girls come into the kingdom because I convinced them to come with me to a meeting, to an event, to a, to a service. You got, you got to come. You got to come. And what would it look like if you influenced 100 people to sit in these chairs right here? And, and you have that potential. You don't... It, if you need help, ask him. He can fix it. <laughs> Honey, he told me I could do it. Now tell me how we're going to do that. And he's going to say, oh, that comes easy. It's like doing this, this, this. And you're going to like, oh, I can do that. And so with the, with the blessing and the promotion that's coming, you, most people would say, well, I know what they're going to do. As soon as they get that, they really need this. And you're going to shock them because you're going to take that as this is fruit. This is God's fruit. This is God's increase. 
and it's almost going to be like a first fruits offering. You're going to take that initial increase. It's almost as if there's, there's a, an initial big increase, not like you're going to get a $2 raise. I mean, like, they're going to offer you, somebody's going to offer you, like, here's a chunk. And then you're going to be better off from now on. But here's an initial startup. And you're going to have a hard time because you'll be, you're, you're not going to have a hard time doing what you're supposed to do with it. You're going to have a hard time convincing them it was the right thing because you're going to want to say, all right, this is God's, not ours. And we're going to take this and we're going to invest in the kingdom one person at a time, meeting practical needs, investing in the lives of others, getting them the things that they couldn't get for themselves to convince them that God's love is real because no one does what y'all are about to do. And then that's just going to be the, that's going to be the tsunami. That's going to be like the, 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 the beginning of a lot of great things because if you'll be faithful to little, God says, I'll always allow you to rule over much. So, so do the right thing initially and you'll always get to do the right thing forever. Does that make sense? God loves it that you don't take no as an answer. You never have taken no as an answer. But you kept pressing through till you get to the right place that you can hear the right answer. And he's going to reveal some things to you that he's going to cause you to believe God for that is way beyond the ability of the two of you to even make happen. It will be financially way over your head that it's not over his. It's financially going to be out of your scope to what you could do in a length of time. But he wants you to believe for the impossible. Count those things that are not as though they are. Call the things that are not and call them into the now. Because you're going to operate in that level of faith, not theoretically, but in the manifest presence of God. And when you do that, the things that you have wanted to see happen, like healing the sick and ministering to the hurting, those things begin to happen because you've not sat on the edges and say, I want that. You step in and say, I'm going after it. And because you'll not just say, I wish so, but you're going to say, I am going to step in that. I will see the Lord's hand move in my life. Now... God's going to move you from the analytical, and I know what you do, map the analytical to where the point is you're going to see it, and you're going to see it and embrace what God's doing for you. Amen. Lord, we just thank you for this wonderful gift to the house. Lord, this gift of, of wisdom and insight and passion, and we thank you for the blending of the two to become one to accomplish your purpose in this house and in this city. Father, we just, we just give you praise for the plans that you have for them and for this house as, as we just receive them here. Father God, we thank you that you will accomplish what concerns them. And Father, that you will walk before them. You will be their rear guard. That you are the favor that surrounds them as a shield to accomplish all good things in their lives. And Father, we just thank you for a fruitful house a fruit that remains, a fruit that testifies to the grace and goodness of God. So, Lord, we thank you for them, and we, give you, uh, we just give you all the glory for who this couple is. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 For you that just understand that these guys don't know them, and uh, Fedor is uh, studying for, to get a CPA license, I think, right? So he's, he's a number cruncher. And so that's when they're saying, he's looking for the answer. The bottom line is the answer. And, and Ashton, she, she just literally, just, she's ready to go out there and just take on the world. And so God has brought the two of them together for such a, a great couple. And so she's grown up here in the house. And since you're four, which wasn't that long ago, it looks like, I know. But they, <laughs> they, have a, they have Thea is now part of that. So anyway, we're just so, we just so just love you guys and glad that you're here. Amen. Bless you. Wasn't that good? Ronald and Serena, where are they? There they are. While they're coming, we'll see if they're going to jump up on the stage or not here. But let me just say that many times prophecy is not just confirming someone where they are or who they are, but it can really call something out that's never been put there originally. Sometimes it's planting something that never was planted there, other times it's confirming, it's, it's, it's about watering, it's about placing uh, just another signpost on them. And so there's, you may hear something that, that doesn't sound like me. Well, good. God doesn't want it to be sounding like you. He wants to sound like him. 
And it's a catalyst that begins to start a process moving and a process moving forward in that. So uh, these guys, the Bible, they're doing exactly what we, what we believe in presbytery should. Romans 8 said we prophesy according to proportion of faith, not by perception, not out of analysis, not out of just our mind, but hearing the Holy Spirit saying something, and you're hearing yourself say at the same time with that. So if you're wondering how do they do this, they don't even know how they do it. They just know they do it. It's because it's what's faith with that. So amen. All right, extend your hands. We're going to pray over this couple. Thank you. just see a, a great gift of faith on the inside of both of you that God is going to just give you a measure of faith and even before you come up God reminded me of some things that um, that happened recently in my wife through my family there's, there's two or three big events I don't have time to go into them all tonight but recently we discovered how important it is to be specific in your prayers not just kind of dream a little bit out loud but but almost write it down and be specific and give God something so that no one else can get credit for it. Like, this is what God's put in our heart. This is what we're believing for. But don't just think it. Don't just talk about it. Document it. Write it down. And so my wife wanted a new car, and ours was just wore out. I mean, it was just life of ministry. You just wear them out. And we're like, all right, well, where's the next one going to come from? You know, got four kids in life, and things don't come easy. And so we just said, God, in your timing, this is what we need. And so for our anniversary, we went car shopping, and we drove to the nicest dealerships, drove the nicest cars, dreamed way outside of our boundaries for what we could ever afford. But we said, if we could ever have our dream car, this is what it would be. And we literally, my wife literally named, okay, this is the color I want. This is the, the features I want. You know, just dreaming. Just, God, I just know that you're big enough one day if you'd like to bless us. And this is what I like, and this is what I'd like to do. And, and so the, the dealerships were looking at us like, can you even really afford to drive any of these cars? And, you know, we didn't care. We just wanted to know what we wanted to dream about. We didn't even know what we wanted. We didn't even know how to dream because we'd never been in anything but what we'd had for years. And so let's go see what's out there. Let's expand our dreamer. And God wants you to expand your dreamer. Look outside the walls of where you're at. Don't limit yourself to where you're at. Where could we be? If God just wanted to bless us, how, what would that look like? And begin to dream a little bit and then get specific. After you see a few things, ooh, I like that, honey. Oh, I like that. Oh, I, I like that. Kind of narrow that search down of what you really feel like would be an awesome blessing to you. And then see if you don't just say, all right, God, in your timing. Because we did this like on a Thursday, Friday. We just went dreaming, went on our anniversary, drove a few cars. Saturday morning got up and we got more specific. All right. And this is how much we can afford to pay for that up there. That's the biggest miracle. It's easy to dream about all the things, but now, okay, let's get into the reality of all of that is out there, but we're right here. So you're going to have to bring all of that to right down here. And five minutes later, I found a, a site for the dream car she always wanted at the price we could afford. And it was, it was, it was miraculous. She's driving that car today at less than half of what it's worth. And everybody's like, how did y'all do that? I'm like, I don't know how we did that. That's unbelievable how that just happened. And when we got to the dealership, there were people standing there hoping we would change our mind because they also wanted that car that was way too cheap. I'm like, I'm sorry, it's ours. We prayed for it. We got specific. God delivered it. I'm, I want to challenge you in your faith. Get specific. First of all, you don't even know what you want. You got you to put your dreamers together. You got to look beyond where you're at and where, God, where could we be in five years from now? And what could life look like in five years? Because God wants to bless you. He's already been listening over your shoulder. He just wants you to get sure that's what you want because he's going to give you whatever you want. And then write it down so that when it happens, you can say, you're not going to believe this. It's right here on paper. The details that we said that we would love to be a part of this ministry, we would like to do that, and, and this house, we would like to live here, and this car. It's almost like God said, I'm just giving you a green light. Just put your dreamer on. Just get your faith up. Why? Because everybody right here is listening. 
It's really not about you at all. It's about, well, could God do that? I wish God would do that to me. Well, let him do it for you first. Just be the shining example of what humility will bring in the blessing of God. Because you know you can't do it in yourself, but God can do it. And then everybody else's faith is going to rise to a new level because they're like, it happened just like that guy was talking about. But I'm not the catalyst for it. Y'all are the catalyst for it. You got to dream it. You got to believe it. You got to write it. And then you just got to trust. Say, like, all right, God, you know where it is. If it's today, if it's tomorrow, if it's a year from now, it doesn't matter. You heard it. We, we believe it. We're going to walk it out. And, and I believe God's just going to turn the tide and everything is going to begin to happen. And everybody's going to say, wow, what a blessing. Earlier, I, I said to the last couple, I said, you're going to get a, a sum of money and you're going to have to figure out what to do with it. And there was somebody in the crowd that said, I know what I'd do with that money. Who, who, are, who, was, who was it that said that? He said, oh, if I got a little bit of extra money, I know what I would do with that money. I feel like somebody here said, I, I, this is the beauty of what we're saying right here and what Pastor Kerry was saying earlier. If you can grab a hold of by faith what God's saying over them, you can walk in it as well. It's not a name it, claim it thing. It's a just knowing how good God is. And he gives you the desires of your heart for his glory. And, and, that's, what, and that's what God wants to do. God wants to bless y'all for his glory. And you need to let him lead a little bit. <laughs> let him lead. Let him lead. Submission is the word I'm hearing. Submission. It's, it's, God's going to give him the mission. Just say, all right, it's not my mission, but it's your mission. Let's, that's God's mission. Let's, 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 just, let's just go with this. And God's going to give you clarity. And it's going to be simple. It's going to be, it's going to be small steps. But you're going to say, I think I know what we're supposed to do today. And instead of her maybe arguing a little bit and saying, I don't know, that's such a good idea. She's going to say, that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to do it. And, and, it, it, and you're going to be like, man, that feels good because we both know that's what we're supposed to do today. And then out of honor, he's going to turn to you and say, honey, what are we going to do today? I know I'm the leader, but I'm going to let you lead today. Because there's a gifting in the two of you. As was said earlier, both of you have this creative ability to hear God clearly. And when you hear, he knows it's right. And when he hears, you know it's right. And so you guys are very, you guys are very connected. When, when marriage says the two become one, y'all define that definition. Y'all think alike. You act alike. You speak at the same time alike. And you're like, that's crazy. We both have said the same thing at the exact same time. That's the beauty of oneness. And so I don't see you guys in a, in a separate, doing separate things in ministry. I see you as a team. You don't even want to do anything without him, and he doesn't want to do anything. You just We're going to do it together. Whatever we do, we've got to do it together, and I believe God's going to honor that, and God's going to let you do ministry together. Maybe Landon will bring clarity on what that is, but I, don't, I, just, I just see that, that unity, that, that equally yoked. That the, 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 the fact your strength comes in being bonded together like that. And in the third court, of course, the Holy Spirit that, that causes this thing to be unbreakable. I don't know if there was some marriages in the past that were broken ahead of you guys, but that'll never be a part of your family. You'll never see divorce. You'll never see that hurt. Your, your children will never have to experience that broken home type situation because God has put super glue on the inside of y'all for a greater purpose. Oh, man. I like your boots, man. Dang it got to give me some of those. I'm going to wear like a nine and a half, but <laughs> kidding, kidding. Man, uh, I just saw this battle over your life. It's like the enemy wanted you, but God won. And you, you've known what it's like to be down and out and to be in a, in a bad place. And you know what it's like inside of your soul. And I just feel like there's this warring of the soul that the enemy has been after you because he sees the potential in you, man. He sees the evangelist inside of you. Man, there is a call of God on your life to save the lost, to seek and to save the lost. And man, I'm telling you what, it will not happen again. There's like a broken heart. There was like some brokenness in your soul. And I just hear the Lord say, it's not going to happen again. It's not going to happen again. 
and he is forming you. And yeah, you're still rough around the edges, and yeah, she still lets you know about it. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm kidding. But I'm telling you, he's forming you. He's forming you because he sees the man of God that you're called to be. And you are a man of God. A man of God. I just see that there's been, um, there's been like, I just see two doors. I'm just going to say there's two doors. There's been two doors in your workplace. It's like, I, I, don't, I don't know which way to go on this side. I don't know, should I do this or should I do that? And I feel like the Lord is bringing some kind of clarity. And one door is just going to go wide open. And you might say, huh, if the door opens, take it. That's just what I'm, I feel like what I'm supposed to tell you. If the door opens, take it. That's the favor of God breaking through for you. Man, just go hard because he's about to bless you. He's about to bless the mess out of you, man. And it's going to be awesome. Man, he's so in love with you. I mean, he's so in love with you. You know, when I see God right now over you, I just get this image of God smiling. He's not like this, say what? He's like smiling. So go forth. He's proud of you. He's got you. Man, he's opening the door and run through it. Amen? Amen. Man, you've got this awesome strength about you. An awesome strength. And like, I just, I just feel this, this, this deep call inside of my soul to call you into that strength. It's okay. It's okay to be you. It's okay to run. It's okay to like stand your ground. In fact, he needs you too. And yes, there's submission. And yes, you're going to do that with humility. But he needs to hear the voice that you have. And he needs to hear the, the ear that you have in hearing the Lord. And go for it. It's amazing. And I just, uh, I just feel like I saw you guys had is it a baby that you were holding. I don't know. I saw that. But I just feel, um, I don't know if there's been a, a, a little bit of anxiety or something there. But I just feel like the Lord is coming all over with this grace surrounding you in, with this child and with your family. Um, there, he loves that. And he would never let anything happen. He is protecting you guys like crazy. God has got such a huge plan for this, you two as a couple. And there's something about you guys. I just see right now there's couples coming over to y'all's house. I just see your house is full of people. Um, and there's a lot of good food. Uh, and there's a lot of fun. Uh, go after that because there's going to be couples that come to you, even lost couples that come to you, that you began just over friendship and, and hanging out. They're going to get saved, and they're going to come to knowledge of Jesus because of you too. Open up your home. Don't be afraid. Open it up. Let it be a fun place for people to hang out. God's going to bless. Amen? Amen. That I'm calling you into a place of not just doing the work, but to managing those who will do work. I am preparing you for a leadership place to where that you will manage people because the integrity that you have with other people and having a heart for them and to see them coming into something. It's not about you getting credit for it. You love to see other people come into their own and for them to grow up into that. Because of that stewardship with people, God says, I'm going to entrust you with men that's much older than you are, but I trust you with where you are. Because of the integrity of the heart and the skillfulness of your heart, God's going to allow you to exceed beyond in management skills in other ways beyond people that have been there much longer. So when it happens... Don't be concerned about them saying things behind the back. Like, how does he get to do that? Because, you know, I, should, I was here first. It's not about who is here first. It's who's first with him that allows it to begin to happen. So you're going to see this begin to take place because it's the influence that God's given you, not just for doing the work for the sake of the work, but positioning you in a place of influence for what I'm calling you to do and dealing with people that, that have, are lost out in the world and especially those who do not know God, you're going to have an influence on them. You're going to be the light that they see, and you're going to be drawn to that as well. And uh, this, there's this real, real anointing to p tell people, here's the truth. This is the truth. And I know that you, know, you think, I need to tone it down a little bit. But the truth is the truth. And God's going to give you ways to be able to share the truth so that it becomes the truth of the Son of God and not just the truth that you interpret. But it's going to hit the mark because you're afraid, you do not want to be uh, lukewarm, half-hearted, hang out, and you'll never have to worry about that because God's not going to tone you down, but he's going to tune you up. And there's a big difference to that. And this tuning up is going to make you more effective than you ever thought before. 
there's really a preach on the inside of you. There's a call of God to declare the word in might and power. There's a prophetic anointing on you that's been hiding in there for a while and saying, I can do what they're doing. I'm just afraid how it's going to come out. And the Lord is going to temper it in such a way that it's going to really hit the mark of the Lord. The two of you are building a spiritual resume in the kingdom of God. You're having this resume of saying we're going to walk with God consistently and not back up, not being sometimes in, sometimes out. Your consistency walking with God is building a resume. So when he starts saying, I'm looking for someone faithful, stand in the gap, you're going to get chosen for it because of your consistency. He can count on you to do what we lean on and saying there's a hurting person, there's a person that needs to go over and, and be spoken to. He can count on you to be able to speak that. So it's not about I need more of something else. It's a matter of saying I'm waiting for a weightier sense of God to trust him for what's going to come out and not trust him to, you know, just put me into that. It is on its way. It will take place. The time will come the two of you will go on short-term mission trips. You will stand in foreign countries. You will stand in other lands, and you will see children come to the Lord in great numbers and see the kingdom of God manifested and see the power of darkness broken over lives because this is what you signed up for, and that's what you're going to be able to see. But you're building a resume for that to begin to happen. Amen. Lord, we thank you for Ronald and Serena. Lord, we thank you that you brought them to Trinity Fellowship Church. We declare over them son and daughter of this house. We love them. We thank you for them, and we confirm these words and bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. And a sweet couple. I mean, they're on the worship team, very talented, very gifted, and uh, we're so thankful they're, they're a gift to this house. And uh, I'm working on a way to how to clone them. I hear there's technology you can do that. And so we're going we're gonna to let them be the first one of that as well. All right. As soon as Joni hands the baby off, then I'm going to invite Joni on up here as well. Everybody into this? I mean, some of you are already thinking about next year I'm going to be up there. Well, you got to prepare now. You can't wait for it to happen. You got to prepare ahead of time for it to take place. All right, let's extend your faith towards Joni right now. Let's just bless her and, and call her into place in the in where she's in the kingdom. Amen. Give it up for our musicians. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's such uh, an administrative gift inside of you. There's an ability to, to like order and simplify and make things work and, and put in line and systematically make things happen. And God, I'm telling you, God has birthed that inside of you. And I just see open doors coming for you. God is, it, there's a relationship that, that I think you just have. It's a friendship that you just had that, that I just see. I, you just watch the Lord do this because there's about to be some open doors that that relationship's going to break through for you. Um, and man, God is so proud of you. It's you've been through a season where you've been isolated in some times and, and you've kind of been lonely. And I just felt like the Lord said, I've been with you. And not only have I been with you, but I'm going to take you out of it. You might be in a valley, but I'm taking you to the mountaintop. And God is blessing, blessing, blessing you. Um, man, I just, I can see the tears in your quiet time. And I can see the, the journaling. I can see the papers. I can see your heart before the Lord. And, I, I, man, God says, he's, you are so pure. You're so pure. Your intentions, your motives, your heart. And a pure heart 
He says, I'm going to release my word to. I'm going to release my power to. I'm going to release my favor to. I'm going to exalt you. You need to hear that tonight. God says, I'm going to exalt you. And don't lose heart. Don't lose heart in this season. Because in due time, I'm going to exalt you. I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to give you that fruit, says the Lord. And I can, I can just, um, man, I feel like there's a, a, a girlfriend. There's a girlfriend that, that is going to be added to your life. There's a, a good friend. Um, and it's going to be like a pillar to you. And there's going to be, it's a, it's, a, it's a relationship that God is going to be all over to inspire you to move forward and be looking for that. And I even see you submitting underneath some older women as well for wisdom and counsel. Um, and look for those. Because as you submit, God's going to give you wisdom for the seasons you're stepping into. Um, I feel like there's a shift in, in even in your work. There's some moving coming in your work. And uh, so ask the Lord, God, give me favor, give me wisdom, give me insight. Because in that shift, he's going to land you exactly where he wants you to release the maximum glory for his kingdom. Amen. I just heard instantly when you came and sat here that, that you're very, very beautiful. You need to hear that. You're a very, very beautiful person. And if, if someone were to ever discover how beautiful you were, they would say, this has been an overlooked treasure. She is so beautiful. In fact, the relationship that he's talking about and, and, and what's coming for your future is because someone is going to realize how beautiful you are in so many ways. You're very talented. You're very creative. You're very gifted. You, you, you pride yourself in helping take care of others and meeting the needs of others and serving others. And, and that's a gift. Not everybody has that. You, you are fulfilled not being in front of everyone, but helping everyone else get in front of. I don't know if there's a, some tech and some arts or something there, but you, I just see this creativity. Like you can make things. You're not only beautiful, you can make things beautiful. You can take things that are not beautiful and make them beautiful. And you're gonna, people are going to understand that, that we, we, we need to get her involved because she makes all things beautiful. It's a gift. It's like a, a beautiful gift. This is anything you put your hands on becomes beautiful. And so I, I hope they don't just say, well, give her all the ugly things so she can make them beautiful. <laughs> but even if they did, they're going to be surprised at how did she take that and make that beautiful. She can take anything and make it beautiful. Beautiful people make things beautiful. Your contagious spirit, you bring light into the room. You bring life into the room. There are days when you want to close the blinds and, and, and shut it all down, and there's, a, there's an oppression that sometimes tries to knock at your door, and you fight against that. But God wants to remove that. God wants you to open up the windows and let the light in. God wants to begin to speak over you who you really are. Don't ever listen to those voices. They're all lies. When you begin to feel insecure and begin to feel a little inadequate or un unable or a little bit weak, just know that that's the farthest thing from the truth because the devil is the father of lies. He can't even tell the truth. And you know God's voice, and you've also heard the enemy's voice. When you hear the enemy, just know immediately that's the far. He, he's after me because of my beauty, my inner beauty. I, I, I have so much potential in the kingdom to bring a smile to someone's face and to light someone's day and to, and to give them a little bit of hope and a little bit of cheer. And the enemy's like, oh, you're, you're just going to have a bad day today. And, oh, remember this. and re just, just flush all that out and say, all right, no, I'm, I'm going to press against that. And if you'll grab that real quickly, it's, it's, if at times it, it comes as a wave and wants to try to overwhelm you, the quicker you can grab a hold of that and recognize it and turn that thing around, the quicker you're going to walk right back out of that. It's like you're not going to have seasons of oppression. You're just going to have an opportunity, and you're going to say, no, not today. And shut it down. I'm going to begin to put my worship on. I'm going to worship. I'm going to put my smile on. I'm going to go out and bless somebody. I'm going to go to the church and do something creative today. I'm going to make something a little more beautiful today. I, I think you're just going to pride yourself in, in making not just things but people beautiful. You're going to be able to identify with the, the ones that have been rejected and have been looked at as not very attractive and you're going to say I see good in you I see value in you and you're going to inspire them they're going to become better because you just like he's saying this 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 girl that comes in your life she may not be the greatest friend initially but she'll become a great friend after you spend a little bit of time with her you're going to enhance her friendship ability because she's going to want to be your friend and you're going to be that with a lot of young girls they're just going to want to be you, you can lead them they're, they're going to admire you they're going to respect you. They're going to honor you. They're going to want to follow you in any direction you want to go. So just take them in the right direction. Always take them in the right direction. And you're going to be like this positive magnet that takes 
people to the right, in, the, in the right direction. And I just want you to know that, that you're very, very young. Because at times you think, time is moving on pretty quick here. And I'm not as young as I used to be. But God says, you're really, really young. And I'm not behind, and you're not behind, and you're not playing catch-up, and you've not missed anything. God's going God's gonna to get you into seasons like summer back in the days of school that seemed like forever. Now we look at summer, and I'm like, where did summer go? It's gone. But when you're a kid, and you're, and you're in that sphere of life where there's no worries, and there's no care, and summer seems like for God's going to let you enter back into those seasons where it seems like, this season is lasting forever. Like this is, like I don't ever want it to end. This is a beautiful season of my life. And it's almost like time is going to slow down for you. It's going to slow it. Like you find yourself sometimes like, I'm, I'm a little spinning out of control. Time, this, this is moving a little too fast for me. Like I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you relax. It's going to all slow down. You're going you're gonna to smell the roses. You're going to say, hey, come here. You need to smell the roses also. And you're going you're gonna to bless people because of your beauty and because of the beauty you're able to let them see in who he is. In fact, I, I just see you going beyond the veil a little more often in that secret place. And you thought it was a personal thing and you really didn't let everybody else be a part of that. I'm going into my secret place and I'm going to have my holy time. There's going to be opportunities for you to invite people into that holy place for them to experience his presence like you've experienced his presence. And it's going to be so rewarding for them but it's going to be even more rewarding for you. The Lord wants you to know that you're not having to put on the shelf or set aside your chief passion, but you're building towards that. Everything you do is building towards the very purposes of God. It's not a matter of saying, well, I've got to go do this to pay the bills and have to do something else, but my really heart is somewhere else. And the Lord is saying, your heart is in all of it. Because wherever you are, there he is extending and, and building something inside of you that one day will cause you to be able to have a far-reaching more influence than you've ever had before in your life. And, and because of this, this ability to know, hear the heart of God and sort out all of the other voices, this is a season of getting discerning of spirits. You're going to discern spirits in such a way that you're going to separate what the voice of the enemy and the voice of God is, and you're going to have the voice that brings such peace to you that you can walk right through big messes and big storms, sort out what is truth and whatever is lie, and still walk with God without it bothering you at all. The reason why the Lord has allowed you to have adversity, to build strength, because what you're going to do in the days ahead, it's going to be the strength that carries you through. It's going to be the strength that casts out the demons and sets people free. It's through you walking through with God and seeing the confidence of the Holy Spirit that you're going to do that. So do not bewail the fact of why do I go through what I go through. This little bit light of affliction is building a greater weight of glory. And because you've said, God, I want to move in the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to see people come to Jesus in a greater way. Then he said, guess what? You're on, you're on line for it, but you're going to go through some things to build the strength and the muscle of God so that you can do that. So these are times when you're, you're learning the secrecy, the secret heart of the Lord and to know how to pull out of heaven into earth and see the manifest presence of God go before you. So don't be well where you are. Don't look at the clock. Don't count the ticks. Don't wonder about, Lord, here I am. Everything's clicking away. And he said he's in charge of time. He operates outside of time, and he can get you in time. You are in the time and his rhythm. And so everything is on his schedule. Don't worry about the details. Just keep pressing in towards him. Father, thank you for my daughter, Joni. Thank you for sending her to this house. Holy Spirit, help Joni's voice to subside as your voice gets loud. Holy Spirit, pour the miracle grow of heaven into her that even the words that have been spoken tonight take deep root, that take hold, that nothing of circumstance or life or this or that can pull and tug those things out because they've been birthed in heaven and they're hers for you to work together. In Jesus' name, I seal these things that have been spoken tonight over this daughter. And I say, Joni, we turn you loose in Jesus' name. Amen.
Some of you don't know who, what Joni does. Uh, she's a counselor for the juvenile system, I guess. Is that right? And she deals with some broken things. <laughs> Special children, I think, is a, is a nice way of saying. And uh, she deals with some really hard cases and situations. And so, and so they're fortunate that they can have light into their lives and to where a lot of them have been rejected and, and dealing with some really rough things. And so we're happy that she's here. So pray for her because she's on the cutting edge of dealing with some, some things that we're glad that she's out there doing. Amen. All right. Uh, the Phillips, come on up. Paul and Elaine Phillips, come on up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless them, honey. We're going to see if they jump. <laughs> you come up any way you want to. It's fine with me. I know she would, but she's wearing heels, so we'll not, we'll not challenge her with that point. I, I didn't wear my heels up tonight, so I'm doing it. Amen. All right, just extend your, your heart this way in faith for them. Amen. How would, you, how would you love someone praying for you? Just let, it, just let it roar. Let it roar over them right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. The impartation of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the flesh, your insight, your wisdom. You're the kind of man that anybody wants on their team. I was thinking, I, I want to say, you, you ought to be with me, but then I'm afraid you might take me up on that, and then I'd have something to deal with here. Because in your heart, you say, if you need me, I'll go. I'll serve. I'm not, I'm, I'm not afraid to uproot, do anything for God. You're just a faithful man. You're a, you're a very wise, faithful man. You're a good steward. You take pride in what you do. You do it as unto the Lord. Everything you do is unto him, not unto yourself. And you do it with all your heart. And everybody loves your work ethic. Everybody loves your attitude. you got a very can-do kind of attitude. You just, just wants to please God. They think it's because you want to please them, but really you just want to please God. And so, and so they admire that, but it's like, hey, it's, it goes way beyond what you all know. It's because I, I, I do everything I do as unto the Lord, and, and God honors you for that. God wants you to know he is well pleased with you. You're a good man. I just see just a pure heart, just willing to do for anybody at any time, no matter what the situation. If it's mine, it's yours. If it's yours, it's mine. It's, it's just, you just have that kind of love for, for people, not just for, not just for groups, but just, just people in general. You just have a pure, loving heart. You don't get caught up in all that drama. I just love you. I don't have to know you. I don't have to, you don't have to prove yourself to me. I'm just going to love you. you. You can't even offend me. You can't even do wrong to me. I'm just going to let you go. I'm just going to love you. And God loves that about you. God wants to multiply you in this house. In fact, you're just a, you're just a mentor. You, you, you think, I don't know if anybody's being mentored by me. You just your life is a living mentor for others. You're like a father in this house. You're just like somebody that everybody admires. Just, they just, when you came into this place, they just felt a, a, a wind of fresh air. Just like, man, that's, that's a good man to be around right there. We could all gain a little bit from this man right here. And, and there is a depth on the inside of you. There is, a, there is just a pure, loving heart for God. Just a very gentle, meek spirit. Just very compassionate. You cry at the drop of a hat. Somebody else cries, you're crying. I don't know why I'm crying. Why are you crying? I don't know. I don't know if I'm happy. I don't know if I'm sad. I, they're crying. I'm crying. I'll figure out why they're crying in a minute, and then I'll know why I'm crying because I just, my heart, my heart bleeds with them. My heart, my heart wants to do something. My heart wants to make a difference, and you are making a difference. And, and, you, and, and, and God's got a whisper with you, and it's almost like you got a whisper back. you got that soft voice, and, 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 and you and God have this little conversation going on all the time. It's just, it's just a whisper. I'm just whispering to him. He's just whispering to me. We're just going this way. We're just going that way. And life's not hard for you. It's easy. You love life. You know, you love being here. 
You just love being in his presence. You love worship tonight. You love the words everybody else got. You're thinking, I don't even have to get a word now. I'm good. I, I just love what I'm seeing. I love what I'm being a part of. Those gifts that you're seeing in operation, the gift of encouragement, exhortation, and comfort, prophecy, these things that are coming, they, they don't have to come from a stage. They don't have to come behind a microphone. They don't have to be called in from another church. They can flow out of you just like honey. Just let it flow. You just say, hey, let me tell you something. And just let the, just like we get up here and never seen y'all before, have no idea what we would say. I've been prophesying to people in this church all week and just like practicing my prophetic gift. I'm, I'm prophesying. I don't know if I'll get to use any of these words or not, but I just, Lord, I'm just speaking this over the church and speaking this over the couples of the church. And, but when we stand here, I got zero, you know? And then you just open your mouth and you just start talking. And the Holy Spirit just takes over. And when you get through, I sit down and go, man, I hope that was right. And then Carrie says, hey, that was, that was confirming. That was exactly what you didn't know. It's exactly what I didn't know. And you're going to find yourself saying things that you didn't know. And wisdom that you never had before. And you're going to teach people things that you've never been taught. You, you, they're just they're going to learn so much from you, and you're going to be like, I learned so much from myself. <laughs> like, I think I was a student here, and they thought I was a teacher because the Holy Spirit was at work. And, and, and you're going to say, man, that was good. I wish I would have thought of that. That was good. God's going to give you an answer when you, never, when you didn't think you had an answer. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to require you getting out of your comfort zone a little bit, getting out of yourself, not waiting on the Word to give the Word. I think your prayer is sometimes being, Lord, if you give me a word, I'll give it. He's not going to give it to you until you step out, until you engage. Just go ahead and start the conversation. Just go ahead and lean that. Just say, man, you sure look nice today. Hey, I sh I'm sure glad the way you did that. Just embark in a conversation and then let God take it. There's also something, there's like a song of the Lord on the inside of you. And it's not just around the house. It's not, I'm talking about if you would write some of this stuff down, it's really good. Like we, could see, we could all sing this in church, you know? You're just singing it like it's nothing, but no, that's good stuff. You know, you probably need to put your little phone on record. And he's like, honey, where'd you hear that? Like, I just made it up. And I'm like, that's good, you know? Let's capture that. Let's, let's get a verse to that. Let's let somebody else put a few choruses to that. I mean, like, that's, that's anointed. That's just pure worship. That's not in front of the, 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 the spotlight. That's just around the house. You just love to worship. You just let the song of the Lord flow up in you and you're like her biggest fan i mean you're like you're like her biggest cheerleader you're like come on you got this man she's something else you're just really really proud of her she's she's just just something special she needs that you're responsible for a lot of this because when she thought she couldn't you told her how much she could you know you you, you you birthed some stuff in there. There wasn't even you spoke things in existence that wasn't even happening yet, and you spoke it forth. And she's like, "Well, you ain't seen nothing yet." Well, you, you were thinking, "I ain't seen anything." You're right, but I spoke it forth, and all of a sudden, it's like you thought I could do that. Well, let me show you what else I can do. You know, just give me the challenge. Just, just bless me a little more, and then see how. It's like he feeds your fire. He's the fuel for your fire. He just, he just says the right things that makes that motivates you, way beyond yourself. You, you, you want to get the you want to get the most improved award when he comes around. You want, to, you want him to see all the accomplishments. And he does. And he, and he tells you about it. And, and that's the beauty of this is, is, is the giftings that you have, they can be multiplied. They need to be multiplied in the church. And I don't, I don't see it necessarily as a class that you teach. It's just being around people. And they, and they leave and they get in a car and they're like, man, they're so good at what they do. I mean, I just gain wisdom from him, and I gain inspiration from her, and I want to sing when I'm around her, and, and I want to serve when I'm around him, and I just feel better from being around them. You know, so, so just, just know that everything you're doing, God's well pleased with. But I think you're affecting a lot of people. I think there's going to come a great reward one day, and you're going to think, I didn't do anything. I really didn't. I never preached from that pole. I never. God said, oh, you did so much more than you ever realized you did. There were people getting healed from your shadow, and you never knew it. And it may not have been physical. It may have been emotional healing. It may have been generational healing. Just being around you guys, 
the, you guys put off a fragrance. It's a beautiful fragrance. It's just, just, I, I just challenge you to walk around. I don't know where you sit or who you hang out with, but just, just spread yourself out a little bit, you know? Just meet a few more people and shake a few more hands and love on a few more. And, and before it's over, everybody will know your name and everybody will know who you are and everybody will want to hang out with you. And, and I commend you for that. It's a, it's a natural gift. It's a gift. It's not something you work. It's just who you are. Just, just continue to be who you are. You're winning on a big level. You really are. I mean, you, you're probably accomplishing way more than a lot of people. And, and it's like, this ain't working at all. This is easy. It's just who we, just be who you are. I, 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 yeah, I, I just want to be around you a little bit, you know. I'm feeling good right now. I'm like, I mean, this is, you just, there's just a, such a sweet spirit about you. And I think this congregation can agree. You know, amen. amen. Man. Y'all are awesome. Um, there's just a, a humble spirit in the both of you. And God, God exalts the humble. Man, you guys are, are being exalted as, as a major part of this house. Um, I just felt the, uh, that scripture says ministers of reconciliation. And God's going to use you guys as ministers of reconciliation in this house and in this area. Um, there's truth. There's, there's humble truth in you, uh, sir, that you need to speak out. You've got the word in you. I can see it all over you. You know the word of God. You know what he says. You know what the word says. You know his voice. There is truth in you that you need to speak out. You're a minister of reconciliation. I see you guys as bridge builders. You're building a bridge between, between all sort of races and people and types. Keep building that bridge. The body of Christ needs you to right now in this area. Speak that truth. Go for it. Don't be ashamed of it. Love unabandonedly. I, I just feel this heart of love, this heart of, uh, uh, I just, you, you gather people around you. You gather the hurting and you minister to them. And sir, I see you ministering to the, to the hurting, to the lonely, to the destitute, to the poor, to the indebted. You've got a heart of David on the inside of you. There's a king spirit inside of you, a leader inside of you. I mean, God's surrounding you with other men who need Jesus, who need help, and it's your time to minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You don't need a church title. You just need his title. A minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ to minister to those men. And go for it. You're building bridges as the ministers of reconciliation. And there's a, man, there's a teaching gift in you. And, and you, can, you can, like, help people figure things out. You can say, oh, come, come here, darling, come here. Let me help you do that. Come on, you do it like this. You go like this. And you got to think like this. And God is amplifying that teaching gift in this season. And don't be afraid when people start coming and go, hey, wh when, when that happens, what should I do? Practical counsel. Because God has given you spirit to, to mother and to shepherd. It would be like this, this hen that has the chicks gather underneath her wing. God has gifted you so strongly to be a mom, and and I and I feel like I don't I don't I, man, your kids there's something about your kids gonna be okay. God's protecting, God's protecting your family. He's got His hand on them, for their good, and for His glory. And be ministers of reconciliation. Build those bridges. This church needs you. Amen. You've come through the school of, of the school of the Spirit by, by walking through deliverance in your own life. And because you understand the strategies of heaven and understand how that warfare begins to work and you've secured your own boundaries and secured your own land and own your own families, now the Lord is saying, I'm going to give you other strategies to secure other families and other places. And with the comfort that you have received, you're going to comfort others. With the power that you have seen to deliver in your own family, you're going to do it again other places. So know that it's just not to secure your own boundaries, but you're going to extend beyond that and show other people how to break through in that. And part of the teaching mantle is going to be, be hands-on. 
not sitting and saying, open your Bible, turn to this, and listen to this. But so let me take your hand, let me place your hand here, show you what it means to build a godly house, show you what it means to have a sanctuary in your house, how to be a godly wife, godly husband, and how to walk these things out in a practicality word. Not just a fact telling them, but I want to walk it through with you. You're like, the two of you are a friend that sticks closer than a brother because you do not abandon people. You do not give up, and you will not let go until you see the breakthrough in people's lives. And when God has put someone on your heart, you, you hold that and contend for it. And he's saying, because you've carried the burdens of others, then I'm coming and carrying your burden. You'll no longer have to be self-burdened and self-carrying your burden. I'm going to bring others along that you don't even know and that's even around you're going to carry that so that you're free to know the battles you're to enter into and not accept battles that God didn't call you into. It's the good fight of faith is the fight that you win. Not just every time someone says, hey, I need you to do this, that. You pray about it and say, is that a battle that God's called me into? I'm not going to carry your armor just because that you want me to. I'm going to hear God in doing it. And so you're going to see breakthrough happening faster than you've ever done before. It's not going to take weeks and months to break through any longer. You're going to find yourself breaking through in matters of minutes of seeing that moving on to the next thing. So the peace of God is coming to rule and reign. The peace of God is going to settle with you. So you're going to battle from the place of peace and not from the place of turmoil. The enemy is no longer going to disturb your seat. You're no longer going to be upset. You're no longer going to lose your seat. You're going to say, I'm seated with him, and therefore I am establishing the, what the victory is going to be in that. It's coming. You're going to see the fruit of your warfare coming, and others are going to benefit, and they're going to learn the same strategies. Amen. Rick, pray over us. Thank you, Lord. We lift up Paul and Elaine to you, Lord. We thank you for the blessings they are to this house. We just thank you for the giftings that's in their lives, Father. We receive these giftings, and we embrace them in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, for bringing them here. And we just ask you, Lord, to show yourself strong in their lives and in this body. In Jesus' name. I want you to know this, this couple that came from Cincinnati. And I said, what brought you here? And he said, God. I should have figured that one. And so I, have, I was here on a Friday afternoon. The offices were closed. I was just doing some work here. The phone rang. And it was them. And they said, we've been calling around town. And nobody will return our calls. They called and answered. I picked the answer machine. God, I called them back. And I'm so glad that I did. God, this is a unique couple. And in the presence of God, they carry that on them. Wherever they go, they set a temperature of the environment wherever they are. And so we're so thankful for them. Amen. Love you guys. Uh, one, of you, one of you said uh, you're filled with the word. Well, let me just say, he has, he has all kinds of scripture memorized. He comes to prayer in the morning. He'll just, he'll just start praying and quoting the book of James. We'll just go through the book of James in prayer time. It is powerful. He is full of the word. And this is the spirit on fire. The word and the spirit. We like it. Hallelujah. Joe and Lavana, where are you guys at? There they are over there. Come on down. Come on down. Uh, oh, I thought he was going to he's going to take a leap of faith here. It's easier going down than it is coming back up, I'll tell you that. All right. This is our last couple for the evening, so just begin to pray over them, call over them. This is God's timing for their life. Let's just declare the heart of the Lord for them tonight. In Jesus' name. I'll, let me hear you pray. Let me hear you pray. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. This time, this power, this mind. Within. Thank you, Lord, for the fullness and grace upon them. Extending the power of them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Man, you're big and strong, but you're super tender. You're like a big teddy bear. 
And uh, man, there is such a, a soft heart to the Holy Spirit inside of you, yeah. and a tender heart to correction and the leading of God. And, yeah. and God's been leading you in this past season in, in ways that you're like, man, I, I, I didn't know I'd do this before. I didn't know this was going to be my road. Um, God said, it's exactly where I want you. He, you need to hear this from the Lord. The Lord says, you're exactly where I want you. Yes. You've been asking God, I need direction. I need, I need confirmation. God, I need to know what I'm doing. And God says to you tonight, you're exactly where I want you. You're not where I, you're going to end, but you're exactly where I want you to get, get you to where I'm going to take you. And you like to work with your hands and build things and do things and tinker with things. And, and uh, God says he's been tinkering with your heart. And God says he's been tinkering with the giftings that he's placed inside of you. And today he's calling those giftings forward. Giftings to set in order. There is, uh, there is a, a gift in you to set in place, to see this is how it should be, and this is what I, this is what I feel like is, needs to be set into play. And that, nah, that's how it should be. God has gifted that in you. Man, step out. And there's, there's even in work, there's some ideas that you're having and ways that you could improve the flow and work and all of that. Shoot those ideas because God's given you favor. He's given you a voice in that place because of your faithfulness. And a faithful voice is going to bust forward in that place, and you're going to see promotion. And God is so pleased with you. Because there was a point where you were almost tapped out. And you said, no, I'm going to keep going. And God is all over you, man. I just, I just feel this joy that surrounds you. Everywhere you go, you like to have a good time. And, uh, man, that joy is going to bubble over. And you're going, to be, you're going to be in places where the church would say is, is not good. And you're going to see the, the grace of God, the mercy of God, the glory of God just burst forth in that place. And then people are going to come to know Jesus. Um, you're going to win people over through friendship. Uh, there is a gift inside of you to just connect with somebody. It's, a, it's like a salesman. You could just, like, just say, hey, come on. Come on, man. Like, come on, let's go talk. We need, we need to go. Let's jump in the truck. We need to go do something. And that friendship, that friendship, God is going to bust through. And during those conversations and during those times, you'll see walls drop. And you'll see the heart of a man open wide. And you'll see the glory of God come in. You're exactly where he wants you to prepare you to where he'll take you. And he's so pleased with you. Amen. Amen. Wow. That was a good word. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Man, there you are like you are like holding reins on this guy right here. I just see that there's a there's like a there's like a gas pedal and a brake pedal, and he's like, "Come on, let's go!" And you're like, "Whoa, whoa hold on! Have we thought about that?" And, <laughs> and and here's what you need to know: that is such a gift of God. He's given you wisdom beyond your years. He's given you counsel beyond your years. He's given you a heart to understand seasons and times. Yeah. He's given you a, a, an analytical mind to be able to process and think, man, this is, maybe, maybe this, is, this is the way. And he's like, this is how it should look. You're like, well, this is probably how we should get there. And there, you guys are a perfect team. Yeah. Man, there is a running forward. I just see like the doors wide open and the light is green. Go. You guys as a couple, go. And the enemy has tried to come at, yeah, I don't know, tried to come at your family and he's tried to come at even the surrounding family members. And he's, there's been an attack from health to all sort of financial issues and all of that. And the Lord is coming tonight to break that off of you. And he's opening the doors and he's pushing you out. Now's the time to go. So in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you're breaking this couple free. I speak freedom in Jesus' name. Open doors, open pastures, let them run in Jesus' name. Thank you for the gift of God that you placed in them. And tonight, we call it forward, we call it out, we confirm it. And God, we say go in Jesus' name. Freedom, freedom, we declare freedom now. In your name we pray, amen. I just saw you as like a son in this house. And it was almost as if they'd say, isn't his dad the pastor? Because you'll be that much of a son in this place. You, you, you're just embedded in the, this is not a, a, this is not a church to you. This is not a, re, a religion to you. This is like the family business. 
I see you parking the farthest out and walking up so everybody can get closer. I see you picking up trash on the way in. I see you just taking ownership of this place. Like, this is, this is the family business, and I'm a son in this house, and I just, I just look at it that way. This is, I'm not a servant around. I'm a son. I have ownership. This, this is my inheritance. This is my future. This is my call. This is what I want. This is my life. I wouldn't want to do anything else but be around here. And, and, and I know what it is to be adopted as a son in, in, a, in a ministry, so much so that people would ask me, how's your dad? I'm like, he's not really my dad, but in y'all's eyes, he is. He's my, he was my father-in-law, but to everybody else, he was my dad. Oh, I meant, I meant your father-in-law. You know what I mean. You, you know, I'm like, well, I know what you mean. It's going to be like, you're, you're just going to be like, your picture's going to be on the family wall of this place. Like, were, were you born here? That's what they're going to think. Like, were you just raised here your whole life? Because you just, like, fit. You just, you just like this is, you, you just, you just gel like this is natural to you, and then you're just a part of the family, and you make everybody else feel welcome. Like, hey, y'all come on into my house, and y'all, y'all, y'all just have a good time, and and we rolled out the red carpet for you. You need anything else? Let me know. I'll make sure you get it. I mean, that's just, it's just that ownership thing. It's like we'll, we'll figure it out. It's all here somewhere. And and earlier when he said you're like pulling the reins on, like hang on, baby, don't jump yet. It's a long way down, and I'm scared of heights. You know, and he's like, come on, we'll figure it out when we get there. It's almost like God says, you better put on your spiritual life jacket. Because he's not afraid of the deep. And he's not afraid of, he got a faith in him that's not afraid of anything. And so you're just going to have to learn to adjust. Because he's not slowing down. And he is going to jump. And you don't want to be left alone. So you're going to have to say, God, let me put my life jacket on. Let me get my safety net. Let me get all the confidence I can get. I'm going to close my eyes and jump with him. And that's coming by you. Praying ahead of him. Because he, he just, he has that tenacity that says, I'm just going to trust God. But you got some wisdom that says, all right, I trust God too. But before we jump, let's make sure we do this, this, and this. Don't wait on the moment because he doesn't know stop. He doesn't know wait. <laughs> when he gets the idea, it should have already been done yesterday. I'm behind. I got to get it done right now. So you got to stay one step ahead of him. You got to be praying through. It's almost like you saw it coming, and so you kind of prayed in the safety net for both of you. You kind of made the little extra assurance. You started putting a little money back, because you know he's fixing to give something away, and we're gonna have no groceries. You ain't careful, because he gave it away. So before it comes, just put the little nest egg, and then it, and then it won't affect anything. You're like, I saw that coming. I made I made some insurance for it. You know, I I, I bought a little extra spaghetti this week, because I knew he was gonna do that again. And so he's just like, just stay one step ahead of him. But always have that spiritual life jacket on. Always be ready to go because you're going to find great joy in his zeal. You're never going to be left behind. He's never going to go off ahead of you. You're just going to have to keep up. It's going to be your lifestyle of having to keep up with him. But this is what you want in him. You don't ever want him to slow down. You don't ever want him to go back. You don't ever want him to hesitate. You want him to be full, all in, gas pedal to the floor for the kingdom. And God will give him the insight and the wisdom, and he'll, 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 and I don't say this disrespectfully, he'll grow up in it. But sometimes it takes the youth and the spirit among us to plow through the things that no one else will plow through because we're kind of stuck in our ways, and he's not satisfied with being stuck in the way we've always done it. There's got to be something more. There's got to be just a little better. There's got to be a, a little more effectiveness. We, we just got to push through this. And I think the church needs to hear that. They, they value you. Sometimes they might get frustrated with you. They just don't understand the full potential in the heart of you. You're not being obnoxious. You're really not. <laughs> you're trying to get them somewhere. And it's obnoxious in the journey, but they're just, you know, you're, you're, your heart is right. Your heart is right. You're trying to get them to where they want to go. They just don't know how to get there. And you don't know how to get there either. But we can't keep doing what we're doing. We gotta change something up so it might get worse before it gets better. But we made some adjustments. Don't be afraid of that. They will grow to appreciate that. And when pastor comes and says, "Hey, take it easy," you know what you say? Yes, sir. Always, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Even if you feel like you're right, and there'll be times where you know you're right. And God, God taught me at times with my children to sometimes say no for the sake of saying no. Because every good son needs to understand, I don't have to have the reason. I don't, you don't have to explain the why to me. If dad says no, I'm going to trust him. Sometimes it's just because dad wants to see how you're going to respond to no. 
And if you'll respond right, he'll come back later and say, well, it was actually what you were doing was right. I was just going to see how you responded to no. But you passed the test, so now I can trust you with a little more because that's all part of the growing experience. And so, and so go as far as they'll let you go, and then when they say stop, then just graciously say, okay, I'll wait until they're ready for me to go some more and then go some more. And, and, and this is going to be... This is going to be a lifetime journey with you in this house. And I want to declare this house is experiencing and is about to experience one of the greatest moves of God, expansions of God. It's just going to, your sphere of influence is going to go way beyond what it's ever gone before. And God's already put a lot of things in a place that it's just going to cause overnight. It's going to be like you're, at, you're, just, you're global. You're, you're like, whoa, this ministry is global. It's like... And it's not just global on, online or on TV. It's going to be an, a, an important part of this region. And you're going, to, you're going to love the fact that you were in it for a long time. You're glad you got ahead of the growth. You're like, I was here when we, I was here when we didn't have nothing. And we were patch cording this and doing that. And, nobody, and we, didn't know, we didn't have anything. And now look at what God's done. You're going to love it. And, and I, I, just see, I just see fruitfulness in the two of you. God's going to bless you. God's going to cause you to multiply. That's not a fairy tale. That's not false hope. Because I have no idea anything about your situation. And God doesn't tease anybody. He says, trust me. Trust me. Relax. I got this. I don't care what's been spoken over you. God can reverse anything. God can repair and restore anything. He's a creative, miracle-working God. He speaks things into existence. And I just speak that into you right now. I speak reproduction into your bodies right now in Jesus' name. I declare fruitfulness right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that you said we our quivers shall be full and we shall be blessed. So, Lord, right now we, 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 just, we just hold our quiver up to you and say, Lord, fill it up. Fill it up. I call it forth right now in Jesus' name. Either you're the God of miracles or you're not. I declare you are the God of miracles. And if you can speak prophetic words, then you can prophetically place giftings within us that we're not able to have within ourselves. And so, Lord, I ask for a creative miracle right now in Jesus' name. I release a creative miracle right now in Jesus' name. And I pray that it will never be an issue again, ever, that they, they, will have, they will get to decide their future. They will decide when they're done, Lord. But you're going to begin the beginning right now, Father. I just call it forth. I thank you that you're not a man that you should lie. So, Lord, we just thank you in advance for what you're doing. We receive it as a gift. We praise you in advance. We make preparation in advance, Father. And I just thank you. Lord, I pray that over this house right now. Lord, I pray for the spirit of multiplication. I pray that, that there would be constant every week. There would be many salvations, not just one or two. I pray there will be notable salvations every week, 10, 15, 20 people a week getting saved. And they would think, how can this continue? How can, people, how can God continue to add to the church? But God said in the early church, he added to the church daily. Daily he was adding to the church. So, Lord, let it be their portion right here in this congregation. Let there be daily salvations. There's one little girl getting 100 people saved. Things are going to be daily. There are going to be Sunday morning services where it's all about casting the net and seeing people saved. Father, I thank you for that. I thank you for fruitfulness in this house. If there's anybody else in this house that's had difficulty having children and reproducing, Father, I call this place fruitful. I pray they be known as don't drink the water. You're going to get pregnant. It just happens around that place. It's easy to have children in that place. Lord, I call it forth right now. I pray that you grow the church one family at a time. Let them multiply. You Older couples better be careful and be like, whoa, wait a minute. Lord, I just thank you that you stir it up in this house. That this would be fertile ground, Father, in every area, spirit, soul, and body, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can verbally declare it, and, you, and you're drawing it out. There is orally saying, God, here's my heart, and here's I'm drawing it out. And the two of you are going to get together. She's going to be able to put it down on paper, and you're going to be saying, here's it, here, we're declaring this to happen, and you're going to come together. No longer his dream, your dream, it's going to merge into one word of the Lord that's caring for it. 
And when the two becomes one at that moment, there is a dynamic of the Holy Spirit, a release of the power of God that's going to manifest. The Word and the Spirit coming together, a dynamic duo that causes things to happen that was way beyond what you could do. Moving from the idea of just dreaming, I hope one day it's going to happen, you're closer than when you first believed and what you thought possible. And so the Lord is going to send you uh, as like an ops, special ops, so we're going to go get, find ways to get something done, and it's going to be in mission fields. It's going to be out in nations to where I'm going to know how to do it, go ahead of time and set it up so when the rest of the people come in, we're ready to go to work right then. And you're not going to be left behind just praying for him. The two of you are going to walk this thing together. It's no longer going to be his and her separate towels and all that, although I believe in that too. It, I mean, it's, going to, it's that the two of you are going to walk together and carry this load together, and you're going to carry that same burden as well. Amen. All right. I love this guy. I mean, he just got back from Houston. He's down doing all the work there. But uh, this, is, this is a special couple. I'm telling you, if what's prophesied tonight is in your heart, you'll see it happen. And I could stand up here and give you story after story this year that I've seen those miracles take place. When doctors said it couldn't be, and yet God had the last word in that. So don't, don't let it start working in your head saying, this is what God said. I'm contending for that truth to happen there. Amen? Amen. All right. You ever had difficulty getting pregnant? Is that no? <laughs> yeah? You're done with all that. Oh, well, I'm, I'm meddling then. I'm meddling. I'm meddling. Uh, the reason I ask is because this past week, uh, we were at a family gathering, and there was uh, two two family members, uh, one of them was told she could never have children again because of um, tumors and female problems, and then she started having seizures, and it was just a crazy thing. Well, now this other girl in the family has tumors in her organs, and she's having seizures. And so one had decided, I'm fine with not having any more children. I'm good. But this one over here was saying, I still want children, but the doctors say it's impossible because I have all these tumors in, inside of me. And so they're just saying, don't ever try. It ain't going to happen. And so we just had them pray for each other, you know, mainly because of the seizures. You're both having seizures. Won't you give away what you need and pray for each other? But she also prayed that those tumors would be dissolved and that she would be able to have children. And two days later, she goes back to the doctor, and he says, I don't know what happened, but there's no more tumors on the inside of you. You probably can go ahead and have children. And so it was just like she was blowing our phone up on text, like, you're not going to believe this. And I, truthfully, I wasn't believing. I'm like, really? I mean, we wasn't no dynamic, super spiritual prayer. We just let them pray for each other. And then she's like, I'm, I'm healed, and I'm, I'm able to have children. So it's fun. Well, there's something going on around. We've had babies happening around here in this summer. And I want to confirm to the man, really talk to these guys. Everybody here, you can confirm something has happened in this house starting at about May. I mean, people coming, and I mean, it's, it's growing like, like we haven't had in a long time. There is a dynamic weightiness of the presence of God that is something is happening, and children being born here, I think, is, is a prophetic sign with that. And so, yeah, that's exactly what we're believing God to take place with that. Love you guys. Man, I'm so glad that you're here. All right, who's going to pray? Thank you, Lord, for Joe and Lavana. Thank you that you brought them together and brought them here. Lord, they're a son and daughter of this house, and we bless them that they will prosper. Lord, what you've put in their hearts, so be it. We just confirm these words, and we bless them and say they will prosper all the days of their life. And we receive them in this house in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you guys. Everybody just stand with us and we'll take a seventh inning or nine, what is it, seventh inning?